Now let's take a look at a few practical examples where the STM32 Trust Framework can help. In our first example, we're going to focus on secure manufacturing. Bob is CEO of a company designing toys. He'd like to make sure the firmware developed by his team is protected from theft and will only run on the hardware developed by his team. To achieve this, Bob needs to secure the manufacturing of his toys by securing the first installation of his firmware in, trust, in an untrusted environment. He also needs to protect and update his firmware in the field. Finally, he needs to detect and log possible attacks on his toys. If we break down a threat analysis on this secure manufacturing scenario, we can see that Bob is trying to protect his toy and firmware assets. He determines that firmware and software IP being stolen, overproduction, and field attacks are the threats his system faces. He also determines that tampering with products, software being stolen, devices being torn apart, and product piracy are the vulnerabilities he needs to mitigate. He mitigates these with the countermeasures on the right that the STM32 Trust provides. In our second example, John is at the head of a company selling firmware and receives royalty payments from its customers. The firmware developed by his team is very valuable and it features application options that can be further enabled by the user. To secure his business, John needs to isolate his firmware from customer one and to protect his firmware IP. He also needs to ensure that he can securely update it independently. Finally, he needs to set unchangeable application states to protect the options enabled. Doing an analysis on John's system, we can see his assets as the firmware developed, royalty payments, and the application options that are provided. John sees hardware and software IP being stolen, overproduction and manufacturing. The vulnerabilities he is concerned about are product tampering and devices being torn apart, software being stolen, and overproduction. The STM32 Trust can provide different mitigations to address these vulnerabilities. A secure boot and secure firmware update is in our third example, where Mark sells costly equipment and wants to offer a firmware update service. He wants his service to only update his equipment and would like to make sure only his firmware runs on his devices. To achieve this, Mark needs to implement a secure boot to check the authenticity of the firmware running on his devices. He also needs to implement a secure firmware update to check the integrity and authenticity of new firmware releases before he installs it. Finally, he needs to identify and authenticate his equipment into which he will deploy his service. Mark has identified his assets on the left and he has a lot of threats to address. Using the countermeasures on the right from the STM32 Trust Framework, he can mitigate the vulnerabilities of product tampering, software being stolen, or board level attacks in the field, and communication channels being compromised. In our fourth example, Olivier is selling devices that report sensitive data to a central server. He needs to make sure the data cannot be exposed to people outside of his company and that it is protected. To reach his objectives, Olivier needs to enable end-to-end -end secure data communication between his devices and the central server, for which he needs to identify and authenticate the devices and the server exchanging this data. He also needs to encrypt all the communication without exposing the encryption key to guarantee the integrity and confidentiality of the data exchanged. If we look at this secured communication example, Olivier values his devices and needs to make sure data that is at rest is stored securely. He sees a variety of threats and vulnerabilities and uses firmware attestation, a crypto engine, product identification, firmware authentication, and secure data storage mechanisms to address the vulnerabilities that are of concern. In our fifth example, 
Rose controls her fleet of devices from a remote server. She wants to be sure no counterfeiting or malicious devices are running with her server and would like to have full control over the devices. To achieve this, Rose needs to protect her devices by checking their genuineness with unique identities securely personalized during manufacturing. She also needs to check the access rights of the remote server operating the devices. And finally, she needs to secure the data communication between her devices and the remote server. Looking at the assets, Rose must protect her device fleet and device identity. She can use the countermeasures of product identification, firmware attestation and authentication, secure data storage, crypto engine, and secure manufacturing methodologies that the STM32 Trust Framework can provide. In our sixth and last example, data protection is of the utmost importance. Jack is collecting user data within his devices as part of a larger system. Jack's devices and system needs to be in line with regulations such as GDPR to be able to promote and sell devices. To comply with this, Jack needs to ensure the confidentiality of the user data which are collected and stored locally, for which he needs to enable secure data communication between his devices and his system. He also needs a secure boot to ensure the integrity of the platform collecting and storing this data to avoid malware to expose them. Data protection is very important, and Jack needs to protect his user data and devices while in the field. GDPR is a large issue for him, among others, and sees a few vulnerabilities. He can use many countermeasures of the STM32 Trust and overlap them to deal with the threats and vulnerabilities he has identified. 